Yes. Ooh, sound Sweet of sound Tuesday, of Tuesday night. Yeah. Listen to that. <sighs> oh. That's yummy, yummy, yummy in my tummy. <laughs> That's an interesting <laughs> color on that can, dude. I'm I'm looking forward to what are we drinking tonight? Yes, yes. Uh, it's actually a beer that I have not had before, so I'm I'm excited about it. I know that uh, Kevin and Angelo have had it, so I'm interested to uh, uh, talk about it. Uh, but you know, we're here for craft beer. We're here for baseball. It's another Tuesday night, and uh, it couldn't come fast enough. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Ah, uh, thank you all for joining us again. This is another Tuesday, another weekly beer baseball blogcast. We are a little bit country. We are or yeah. Let me go back. We are a little bit country. We are a little bit lock and lull. That's what I meant to say. Keeping baseball history alive, one beer at a time. Collectively, we are the Beer Baseball Blog. The Adventures of Craft Beer and Baseball. And welcome to episode 118 of the uh, Beer Baseball Blogcast for uh, August 2nd, 2022. Just watch, I'm just watching my Wi Fi just go up and down. So I'm not even sure if I'm robotic, if I'm. Um, if I'm pixelated, it's, it's You're one loud of those. And clear. You're loud and clear, Michael. Perfect. Perfect. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And as always, we'd appreciate if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Let's do some housekeeping before we start. If you'd like to support us in our efforts here at the Beer Baseball blog, you can buy our stickers, buttons, and beer coasters on our Etsy page. Go to beerbaseball.store. If you'd like to come become more connected with us, become a Patreon member for as low as $5 a month. Go to patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. I'm going to scroll our most wonderful Patreon subscribers right now. These are the great people that support us every month uh, for what we do here at the Beer Baseball Blog. We were actually talking about some stuff that um, that we were going to do. Actually, Kevin and I were talking uh, that we wanted to do, and we haven't told Jack and Angelo yet, but it's a it's a fun little thing that we are going to put together. Um, and uh, no, I don't want to say anything about it, but I'm just going to I'm just going to uh, tease it right there. So but we have some fun stuff coming. Uh, it's kind of a side project that I, I want to uh, tell people about. Um, but as always, we have other uh, programming that we have every week. Um, we'll talk about that more during the show. Here's the lineup card for today. In the leadoff spot is the VP of content development here at the Beer Baseball blog, Angelo Trinidad. Welcome. Happy to be here. Happy it's Tuesday night, drinking my beer out of my Big Teach 45 party favor. Yes, that is Big Teach 45 vintage photo. So uh, excited to be here, excited to be hanging out with my good brothers, and excited for uh, a night of craft beer and curveballs. Love it. Love it. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our field correspondent and senior research analyst here at the Beer Baseball blog, Kevin Lyon, is not here yet, but he will be here shortly. But hitting third is the Goodwill Ambassador and the Sultan of Swig here at the Beer Baseball blog. It is Cowboy Jack Durango. Woke up to the sound of pouring beers. Baseballs would fly, and I think of you. And all the tears you cried that called my name. And when you needed me, I came through. I paint a picture of days gone by. When love was blind and you would make me see, <laughs> I'd stare a lifetime into your eyes. So I knew that you were there for me. Time after time, you were there for me. Remember IPAs, drinking glass after glass. Empty cans and baseball, I remember you. 
and through the sleepless nights and every endless game, baby, I remember you. Let him hear it. Yes. Special request from <laughs> Thunder Files Ryan, good friend of the show. Buddy, that was hard. <laughs> I, hey. I, feel, I feel like Ric Flair two nights ago, dude. Ready for the ready for the big one. <laughs> hey Ryan, no refunds. No refunds, Ryan. <laughs> No take backs, babe. Nah. -uh. <laughs> ah, I love it. That was. Rough. I love it. Hey, that that's okay. They, you know that. Um, there's a many. There's in fact, this is this is actually uh, a musical episode. Uh, we have some uh, music that we're we actually be talking about today. So, um, again, there there's music that's that's obviously you know we all know and love. Uh, but then there's other rough gems. And uh, Cowboy Jack, you are you are a, a, a diamond in the rough. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. And cheers to everybody in the chat. <laughs> Welcome to Tuesday night. Let's get it going. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, that that, that, that job has been long gone. It's been long gone. It's been long gone. <laughs> it's been long gone. Hey, we, we still have not had uh, uh, the, the, we still have not had the singer uh, on the show. The one who who actually has a uh, an iTunes song right for a Christmas. <laughs> We might have to yes, have a Christmas. Yes, we might have to have a Christmas version of. of hey, uh, maybe, maybe on the Christmas episode, maybe there'll be there room for a live performance. We'll see. Perfect. We'll see. Perfect. Let's make that happen. Hey, Let's make that. It, happen. it takes technology, Michael. So you know oh. how that goes. All you oh, guys boy. gotta do is ask. I'll <laughs> sing. I'll sing anytime you want. All you have to do is ask. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, you know. One of our favorite times of Tuesday is uh, when we get to crack one open. So let's find out what are we drinking tonight, guys? Uh, Angelo, you're up. This looks familiar. <laughs> yes, this is a, this is a favorite of the show, uh, and one of Cowboy Jack's favorite. Uh, I was going to say so, that looks uh, interesting. I'll have to try yeah. it sometime. <laughs> so it's a radiant haze by a toppling Goliath. Uh, had a had a, one last uh, stray left over, so I decided to crack this open on a Tuesday night and uh boys I'll tell you it's never been sweeter. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. After a long week, um I'm sure or actually, you know, to start the week. Let's let's have a good beer to start the week, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's 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 look at it that way. Doesn't there you it go. all just Perfect. kind of merge together, dude? Like this is just we're going downstream and we're just Tuesday night coming up for air for a quick one and then back down. I mean, there's no separation anymore. It just keeps going. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> love it love it so uh jack now this is this is a beer when i saw this i didn't um i didn't think of anything of it at first because but i'm like oh this is very interesting but then i looked at it and i actually have a tie to this beer uh, amazingly enough really so tell, tell us about it all right so based out of tempe arizona tonight brought to us by the Haas brewing company solid arizona beer all the time I am trying the Sinfo Local Citrus IPA. Zesty, juicy, and local pride. Proudly brewed with love by 24 people. Thank you. And this, this uh, a local citrus IPA with flavors of lemon, grapefruit, orange, and other citrus from the Central Phoenix Backyards. Brewed for Central Phoenix in Central Phoenix. And it took me all weekend looking at this can to realize that Senfo was short for Central Phoenix. So, oh, yes. I was like wondering, what does that stand for? <laughs> bro, cheer, cheer, dude, cheers to the old CTE monster, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So I saw this and I'm like, oh, Senfo. And I go, that's kind of odd. It looks, I'm like, uh, maybe it's Sen Fa, you know, it's like the, like, uh, uh, the Fa that, that, you know, the, like the ramen, the, what was it? The, right. The Fa. Yeah. So I'm just like, I'm like, Oh, but I go, wait a second. If this is what I kind of think it's, it's kind of implying it's central Phoenix. So I lived in central Phoenix and 
so did uh, my buddy Matt Harper, who's on the Carvers and Creators show. So he his his family had a house that was um, in Central Phoenix, and one of the things that was, I guess this was like probably maybe in the '60s and '70s, like that area had like a lot of citrus trees. Their house had a whole bunch of tangerine trees, and so um, every Christmas they would invite people over to pick tangerines. And I was like, oh, I don't want to go over there and pick tangerines. But it's like they would just have a day of it and they'd pick all the tangerines off the off the trees. Um, and then they would put them in bags and everybody got to take one home. But then they would just they would make like a, a jungle juice type of thing out of the tangerines, which that was a, that was the adult thing that I didn't know about that they were doing. Sure, dude. And um, <laughs> free labor for booze, bro. I it was it. it was exactly it, and it was like it was Christmas time, so we were all going to get together anyway. But it was it was such a fun time. I remember every year getting together, picking the trees, and so, so I I think this is well. It says lemon, grapefruit, orange, and other citrus. So, but I think that all through there, that central Phoenix area used to be like uh, a lot of citrus trees. So um, I, I wasn't uh, I, I was only aware of that because um, because I'm an old guy from Phoenix, Arizona originally. But did you know that, Jack? I did not. I didn't. Well, okay. okay so no, let me let me rephrase that. I didn't know about that story, <laughs> but mm. I did know about the citrus trees. Like still in the Arcadia area, um, it's it's a uh, lot of citrus trees. Yes. Yeah. There's there's an area that's really really nice. Yeah, so they 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 did something with it. So I, it was cool. I, I, they didn't call it Senfo, by the way, but it was a, it's just kind of. A, but I, when I saw it, I go, "Oh, I'm sure that's probably what it means." And now that Central Phoenix area, closer to like maybe like Indian School or Camelback area, it's like all developed. You know, developed now. In fact, I have a friend that lives down there, and it's 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 totally like uh, I, I I don't want to say gentrified, but it's like it's more artsy. Let's just say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's the like the Arcadia area. It, yeah, yeah. they went for it. Yeah, and Greg yeah, Hall, all, the, back, all yeah. the backyards there have you know they're all the irrigated yards, and they have a lot of right, 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 right. Yeah, it's mostly gone now, but it's um, but that's the way that it used to be. That's awesome. So Hus Brewing, definitely check it out. I, I can't wait to uh, have some more from that. I like whatever I ha- I've had from them from before. Brother, next time you're in town, let's make the uh, let's make the trip over to Tampa. Make the loop. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> the loop, my liver won't survive, but I'm in. <laughs> my my brother's here. My brother still. My brother lives in Goodyear, o- over by where the uh, the Reds have their uh, facilities. So yeah. So hello, uh, hello, hello. <laughs> uh, poor, when you're in town, poor, poor decision. <laughs> yes, we're gonna we're gonna put him to the test. <laughs> no, but I want. I definitely want to make the loop. Um, Oh, he lives at Avondale. So there you go. So, um, oh, and Bubble Pop, my uncle lives in Goodyear. Wow. This is like to become oh like a total God. Arizona Phoenix show. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Is poor decision Bubble Pug's uncle? Yeah, it might be. It might be. We might be related. Oh, my God. It all comes around. And she's a Brewers fan. So there you go. <laughs> How funny. So, um, uh yes yeah west side west side of arizona or phoenix i should say (laughs) um so kevin uh hopefully you can get here soon because i can't wait to talk about this one i was hoping that he would get here uh soon enough too but uh but i'm gonna i'm gonna speak for him his beer tonight is uh debaser from stereo brewing company it is a new england hazy ipa hazy ipa hopped with mostly azeka and uh finished with mosaic and citra Aroma of pineapple and fresh citrus. There's we have like a ton of fruit in our beers, uh, which I love, and melon flavor. Slightly bitter finish, uh, medium body with hoppy fruit character. Now um, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it out to uh, my my colleagues here. Debaser. Uh, any idea what that is from? I'm I'm hoping it's a really gnarly metal band. Ah, uh, you're you, uh, not metal, not metal. You're you're close though, <sighs> Angelo. Any any thought? Debaser, debaser. Um, I mean, I'm gonna go yeah. with Cowboy Jack and say it's a music reference. Yeah. So, it's Stereo Brewing Company. Yeah. So, does this have to do with like 
removing base? No, I, I, a good guess. Good guesses. Um, it's actually named after um, it's the first song off the Doolittle album by the Pixies. Uh, oh, from wow. 1989, I believe. It's oh, yeah, no. I mean, just a barn burner of a hit, dude. Barn <laughs> burner of a hit. No, this, Can't this, yeah. An idiot. Why didn't I know that? Stupid. <laughs> but we do have Sorry, people guys. in the chat that actually knew this. So, of course, uh, of course, excitement. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, if if you ever, uh, I actually listen, re-listen to this album today. It's as awesome as I remembered. Uh, but it, for for new fans, it might be a little weird. And I wish Kevin was here because I was gonna I was gonna tell him this. I'm not sure if he knows this or not. The lead singer of this band, his name is Frank Black, um, and uh, or Black Francis. He actually went under a, a couple of pseudonyms. Uh, but uh, I actually interviewed him when he had his first solo album in Phoenix in tempe actually ah here he is yes yes i actually interviewed uh the the lead singer of this band for uh our uh the zia zine which was the zia records newspaper it was my first interview I'm not ready, yet. I'm not ready. <laughs> don't worry don't worry so um so I, I I interviewed him and it was terrible. It was the worst interview ever. And if I, I I'm sure it's it's as I I'll have to look it up and see if I still have it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was it was my first interview. I was super super scared and uh, I tried to be I don't know I tried to be witty and pers have personality and it was a, a big failure. <laughs> but I did but I did interview him. Yeah, <laughs> I would have loved it if you would have got like super awkward. You're just like, uh, your albums are awesome. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly yeah it was uh no it was not good it was uh i thought it would be a lot better but um yeah um oh uh, yeah there, there's actually some good pixie songs that you could actually do that are, that are oh my lord dude you guys are gonna kill me with this <laughs> all right um, pixies it is dude see you yeah. next week greg hall yes that's i think well where is where uh, I, I mean you could do where is my beer you know that's an easy one yes. or where's my this mind? monkey's Maybe. gone to heaven there you go. Um, all right. So, um, yeah, everybody loves this album. Is, is cool. Something that's you, cool, too, that, I, that a nice touch on this, Michael, is you said the New England uh, New England Hazy IPA. Where are the Pixies from? They're from Boston, no? That's, yes, that's correct. There so you go. All right. There. Wait, I'm I'm like, yeah. what? I thought Boston was in Minnesota. They're close to New England? <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. Oh, all right. Cool. <laughs> Tri-state area, keeping it real. I mean, I think you already read all this. But the only thing it says, it says this beer is debasing minds one sip at a time. Hashtag listen to your beer. So I guess that must be a hashtag. Yes. Guess, um, this is in Placentia. Um, if anybody's in the Orange County area, it's like the northern OC area here. Let's get. Yeah, finally. Yeah. Get to do that so there's some great time. breweries in Placentia. There's another one too. They're they're by the uh, bo bottle logic. Bottle logic bottle is in logic is like north anaheim slash Lencha, but that, that's pretty close um michael and i went there about four years or so ago i need to get back there because i haven't had anything of theirs in a while oh yeah and and then uh in their tap room they just spin they spin vinyl so it's like yeah. it's i mean kind of how, how and, awesome is that yeah and almost everything is i think pretty much everything they make has some kind of music reference to it so i yeah. saw this one i was going oh, i never had this one and you know and at the same time i'm always every time i go to the wine i'm looking for some radiant haze for jack just to because you know peace offering like here you know Yes, uh, uh, not not no, not pl placentia, not placentia. Placentia. <laughs> placentia. Yeah, it was. It's too close. I mean, right? I, I would guess that the placenta of Fullerton would be placentia. To be fair, you know, <laughs> that is a fair point, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're going. Here, so, that. so that's that was the Orange uh, County. That's, we did. That's very specific reference. So yes. So we did the Orange. That was the Orange County post in the show after we did. You know the Phoenix area. Yes. So. Yeah. Cheers to. Uh, go ahead. Cheers to cheers, cheers to cheers. Senfo and, and cheers to Orange County. Yes. <laughs> and. Uh, all in this song, uh, if for for those of you uh, that uh, that still use Facebook, uh, I try to <laughs> minimize my use of Facebook. But there's actually a really great uh, uh, site called uh, within Facebook called uh, Slicing Up Eyeballs. Yes, and it talks about like uh, like eighties and nineties music. Oh, look at that! Well, your brother <laughs> made a mention of it when I came in. I'm like, oh, 
I was like, it looks like Doyle from, <laughs> from Dancing with the Hair Spider. Like, oh, yeah. I, I got a little tiny devil lock. I'm like, well, heck, might as well just pull it down. The good old devil lock from the Misfits. I just don't have enough hair. There we go. All right. And Ed will appreciate that, too. So, uh, yeah, slicing up eyeballs for those of you on Facebook yeah, that want to watch. That's a good group. Yeah, that's a, uh, it's awesome. And then it's from that song, uh, Debaser. Yeah. All right. So, my beer tonight is um, so this is from Brewery X. It is the Dictionary Roulette, um, and it is a also a – it says a New England hazy IPA, but I – no, <laughs> it's not. Um, yeah, I, I, it's not 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 like you – not like a you probably are having, Kevin. Um, but, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is. It's like – it's weird. Like the New England IPAs on the West Coast have like – they don't have that kind of like murky, orange juicy type of feel. So maybe maybe it is. I, but it's, it's classified as a New England hazy – uh, dry hop. It's it's dry hopped. I think that's the thing that takes oh, man, the palate away. So it's dry hop with citra and mosaic hops. Um, so I saw this one. This is my first beer from Brewery X. So really? um, yeah. So oh, I, that's I, right. I, so yeah. it's a joke. There was like two times uh, we were going to go for beer drinking in the Anaheim area, and both times we go to Brewery X, and neither time we end up at Brewery X because Brewery X, um, Angelo, or anybody out there, you know, you mentioned Bottle Logic. Uh, Brewery X is like about quarter of a quarter half a mile away from Bottle Logic. Like you can d do a full kill your liver tour in uh, Northern Anaheim. Much like yeah. by where I live, you can definitely kill your liver yeah. around here. So which which I don't think I've had this one before? By the way, you were talking about yeah. earlier saying, "Oh, Brewery had." I don't know if I had this one. Yeah, it's I I was surprised to see it in cans. Where where was the Stereo Brewing? Where did you get that one? Uh, total Wine, actually. Total oh, Wine. Total One. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yeah. So I just happened to see this at my uh, place down the street and I was really surprised to see it. So I picked it up because, you know, as a brewery X and I haven't had it yet. Um, but it was like, you know, before right before COVID. Right. Uh, yeah. It was like it was like 2020. Yeah. We yeah, they were they were getting super huge and we were like, oh, we need to check them out. We feel like we should. And we just never have. Um, and by the way, uh, I want these socks. I definitely want these socks. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Enough. The, pro the problem is, the problem is you'd never get a beer brother yeah. well see nobody um i i'm in a i'm in a cave somewhere in uh no one's in, gonna, yeah in, no one can read that in los angeles so uh people would not see the bottom of my feet ever uh because i never relax my feet my feet are yeah. on the ground you can't just kick your feet up during the show you know, <laughs> put the socks on brother, your feet brother you're like a horse you, you sleep it, standing up <laughs> if, if, if Michael kicks his feet up during the show, he's going to kick the Cat Five cable out of the. the yeah. Yes. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. I and also like you know my feet are on the ground, but um, I'm always reaching for the stars. Thank you, Casey Kasem. Rest in peace. All hey, right, here we go. <laughs> I hope. Hey. All right. And so let's do it. What's up, Kevin? Real quick, can we talk about the Brewery X being in the news recently? Have we talked about that at all? How they? No, we haven't. What's up? Well, you know, they had the bid they, the, the, to get um, Modern Times. And apparently there's a lot of controversy about that bid. And it, apparently that did not go through. Right. So I, so I don't know what actually happened with that. They came through last second with like a $20 million bid. Which again, Brewery X, I was always like, something's up here. Someone, it's like some. Yeah, I feel some, like some you called it. Some Orange County family, you know, like, oh, let's pretend we're craft beer. We'll just put a bunch of money in the beer right because you go to this facility it's like a one of those old like furniture warehouse stores like you know levitt's was levitt's a thing in arizona you yeah. know what i mean like yes. a place like yeah. that you know you'll love it at levitt's it. like yeah like one of those gigantic furniture stores and they convert it into a, a brewery and i'm just like oh my gosh this place is yeah. massive and every yeah. time you go to trade every day you go to trader joe's you'll find at least two or three brewery x things so they definitely got their name out there the last few years and it's interesting that they last second put that bid in and now something happened to where it, it's like nothing you're really talking about. Just saying the bid didn't go through. And I can't bid remember the other dude. Yeah, yeah. Mafia techniques. Yep. Well done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there was um, like Stone is uh, did get acquired by Sapporo. Yes, sir. So um, it's that's a that's kind of a done deal. Um, yeah, the so, group who said they're never going to sell, they did sell cool. in the end. Yeah. Sapporo? Yes. Yeah. They bought yeah. Stone officially about a month or so ago. Yeah, right. 
They say Stone's still going to make everything, but they're going to be making Sapporo stuff too in the if their places in the in the U.S. Yep. Yeah, I know. Yep. It's weird. So, it's interesting. Ah, uh, it, it's I'm sorry. dude. It's not yeah, weird. Dude. That's bridging cultural gaps, man. Let's yeah, do know. this. There you go. <laughs> and that's that's it. fair because I can at least tell you, like, I mean, I went to Japan about a decade ago, and they, craft beer was not a thing at all. And it kind sure. of is. There's definitely is more of that now for sure. Yeah, like pretty much. You just get your rice loggers pretty much when you're in Japan. That's pretty right. much all the styles. And that's starting to get out there now. I got to look at the um, bridging, bridging cultural gaps, dude. I there dig you it. Go. But there is a, in, in Japan, they actually do have like craft, uh, uh, not, not breweries, but this place where you can get craft beer. And uh, uh, I, I should share some of those on, on, I have some of the videos that they do that from. Um, so like, it's, it's a big thing over there. It's like, it's like, I don't know. It's like getting like high end sushi here. You know, it's yeah. like, uh, finding those places that have, you know, they, they FedEx it in. It was, it was in Japan like this morning, but it's, you know, on your plate, uh, uh, by, by the nighttime. So it's like, there, there's places like that in Japan. All right. So let's, let's do it. Let's, uh, do this week in baseball history for August 2nd. August 2nd, 1907, the Senators' 19-year-old rookie right-hander Walter Johnson makes his major league debut, losing to the Tigers 3-2. Ty Cobb gets the first hit off the future Hall of Famer with a bunt single, who will finish uh, with a 417 and 279 record. That's uh, a .599, almost a 600 uh, average. Uh, record while compiling an ERA of 2.17, which is absolutely insane, uh, in his uh, 21-year big league tenure uh, with Washington. So uh, the big train, Walter Johnson. Yes. Dude, look at Walter Johnson's eyes. Tell me this dude hasn't seen some life before this picture. <laughs> He's like, well, I was the I was the seventh of 18 children. <laughs> right, Dad I left. Dad I'm sorry, sec, the, officially second to six because I had to look something up to confirm something about. Wait, this, what? He's, he's the like second, second of six, six children. Six. Six dad, children, yeah. dad left the dirt farm to us when he died. When I was <laughs> three, and you, uh, you know what? I love you saying this because he was actually born on the, on a farm four miles west of Humboldt, Kansas. So good job, yeah. Humboldt. Humboldt. I, but here's yeah. why I, I know the dead eyed stare of somebody born on the side of the road, dude. I know, yeah. man. I know <laughs> the dead eyed yeah. stare of tragedy. So, yeah, dude, me, and big, me and Big Train, <laughs> kindred spirits, brother. And hey, <laughs> re ready to go full circle? Guess where he moved to when he was about 14 years old? Central Phoenix. <laughs> oh, my so God. Close. You know how close you are. Try again. Wait a minute. Um, Yuma. Now come on. We just talked about this town. Orange County. Placentia. No, not not Placenta. Fortis. <laughs> oh, Fortis. Oh my God! Really? Yes, How funny. Yeah. yeah. The reason why wow. I know that because there's oh, a theme. Oh wow, dude! Fullerton, California, where dreams go to die. You know what? That's why I went to college. Thank you. That's where my dreams went. To, my dreams went to die at Cal State Fullerton. So there you go. Thanks, Jack. Wow. Quiet, dude. Ah, there yeah, you so you go. went to Fullerton awesome. Union High School. So I was like, hey, I gotta make sure I do the research real quick. And like, because there's this poster of a game they did. It's like an exhibition game where he's gonna pitch the Babe Roof. And I've always seen this poster in Cooperstown, and it said Fullerton, California. I was just fascinated. Like, what? And I looked up, I'm like, wow, he's from Fullerton. He, wow, Fullerton. that's awesome. Back yeah. when you know there's no baseball teams in the you know, well, except for the Pacific Coast League. That so what what, what 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 year was that? That he did did it say what, what year he moved there? It said he was a uh, 1902. Was so was that up. was that during like the gold rush years? No, what, what that would have no, that would have been the gold rush would have been like the 18. Oh, it was the 1800s. Eight, in the in the eight, mid to 1800s, yeah. When I packed up and moved out west, yeah, I moved up to the. You know, I knew to go. I knew not to go to uh, Deadwood, so I tried to go to California instead. Got it. Got it. Well, so, yeah, uh, and, and was, another and another famous person uh, made their, <laughs> their pro wrestling yes. debut. <laughs> at the Ed Fullerton at the Ice House. Um, yeah. That would be Ed, Ed. I made my referee debut, and and uh, our late friend Matt Sinister was part of that show as well. There you go. There you go. Gold Rush. Yep. That's right. Yes. 49ers. Duh. 49ers. All that right. makes sense. All right. So, so, I, was, so that, I was wondering, why, so why, why, why would you move out here? <laughs> yeah. 
that little he story was working that, in oil fields actually he was working in oil fields while i was in high school so there's part of that so that that little story that uh kevin just told for everybody listening that's a little glimpse into the fun that is hazy history every <laughs> sunday on instagram live with kevin lyon and cowboy jack durango nice. we do deep dives on weird stuff like this and uh you'd yep. be surprised what we find out so <laughs> yeah. cowboy nice. jack surprised me a little surprise Cowboy Jack surprised me almost every week. This week I got to surprise him, so that was fun. I, nice. I, I loved it. All right. Here, here's uh, number two. August 2nd, 1921, with the jurors lifting the men onto Uh-oh. their shoulders, the jury acquits the eight White Sox players accused of throwing the 1919 World Series. The next day, Commissioner Kennesaw Mountain Landis will banish all innocent defendants from playing professional baseball again stating overwhelming evidence clearly shows the black Sox fix the games with gamblers my my one question is it because i don't recall is the this trial is it in chicago oh that's a great question because um, I, I would say you know there could be some shenanigans there but you know that's that's very interesting. I, I will have to definitely. You think look I, would, that one oh, I was in the courtroom that day. I can't remember where I was <laughs> last week. Well, I, I mean, it, wouldn't they have to be tried in the jurisdiction where they were, where they were charged? I, so yeah, it would have to be there. And, well, and that, the, only, the reason why I say it might not be Chicago. Who I don't remember who they played that year, but it could be. Uh, okay, the Phil Bass at Chicago. That's right. I, I thought it was. I was trying to remember who they played because it could have been in that city too. So oh, Eddie putting us a hey, Eddie Goodell's getting put over here. There you go. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, Ian. That was a good yeah. one. <laughs> and 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 I remember the movie because the movie had John Cusack in it, which right. which uh it was uh kind of distracting, but um, but I don't remember it being a great movie. Uh, I think it was like in the late 80s, right? That was um, like really the baseball movie boom around that period between Bull Durham. Right. Um, That's right. You know, the that natural. Do- what's that documentary you talk about, uh, Cowboy Jack? What's Major League. 1980s, 1989's uh, true life documentary of uh, the uh, the Cleveland Indians and uh, I don't like Willie Mays I... Hayes and uh, Ricky. <laughs> I, I don't know. Little... Hey, come on, you, Vaughn. Jack. Jack, please tell me you saw that joke by my son Ed. That was very good. Thank you, Ed. Yeah, no, very little, little <laughs> tiny. You. Yes, he exactly. got, you know, he definitely sold that pop that he got for sure, though. <laughs> sure. Um, and right. So, uh, yeah, I was trying to think back, and it's like I, I, I should go back. You know, we should do, we should do a deep dive in this. I, again, this kind of adds to some of the, uh, some of the stuff that we want to do later um well maybe, maybe we should we should talk about this a little bit kevin maybe maybe this yeah. is a time to talk about this Uh-oh, so what, 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 what's, we're talking about so what? we, we had this we had this thought that um that we wanted to do this and i think that um you know i'm just throwing it out there we're, we're thinking about doing watch parties on twitch and basically it's it's watching games uh in their entirety so i'm sure that we could find a lot, some of these World Series games, some of these other games. All Star um, games are good ones too. All Star games YouTube. are really awesome. Say, there are, there's a lot on YouTube. Just yeah, you got to be careful. Nothing modern. <laughs> you know yes. I mean? oh, not, yeah. We're not. We're not going to watch like last year's World Series. We're not going to watch anything in this millennium, probably. Exactly. Yeah. So like 50 years ago, we're going to watch. So we're going to watch it in there, you know, in its entirety, like from start to finish. And there's a lot. And of, hey, like, it's only like two and a half hours. <laughs> Yeah, two and a half hours. So it's like watching a movie with with uh, the Bear Baseball uh, bloggers. So, but one of the things that I'd love to do is watch if, if there's any footage of these games. Uh, I don't think there's games like from 1921, obviously, but right. from like from like there's I know that there's there's footage of like there's the 40s and 50s, a and little stuff bit of like 40s, some of the 50s. I mean, it, I don't even know if it's I, I don't think it's on HBO Max, but uh, if anybody's ever heard of what it was a game. That's some amazing footage of 1940s baseball. It's on HBO and it's actually colored footage from like it started, I think, in the 40s and it did show from 50s and 60s stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We, yeah sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, go, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Because we were just talking and 
we, we see people we know like doing these little watch parties and a bunch of people just hanging out having a good time. Like, why can't we do that with baseball? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we were trying to think about like, and, and I think we have, we have so much to add to these things. Like, okay. So, um, I, I won't say exactly what it is because I'm sure we're going to start off with a with a couple. We have a couple like home oh, runs yeah. that we're going to start with home run games, I should say, that are so good that that we can add our our colorful commentary to. Yes. So I, I was thinking about like how how we could do this. And uh, but but again, going back to these historic games, if we ever find anything like this. And then we'll be learning and we can actually add, add a little bit to it. So I've just thrown it out there. I, I am obviously Ian is in. <laughs> Thank you. Ian. Which is awesome. Just yes, let Jack? me ask you one question. What? Yes. Sir. Would this be an avenue to listen to Cowboy Jack doing color commentary uncensored over baseball games? <laughs> Potentially. 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 <laughs> All right. My you know, interest already, is yeah. peaked, dude. My interest is peaked. But with some of these old games, I kind of, you, you know, part of the fun's going to be hearing like these old commentaries as well. Yeah. So at certain yeah. points, we're going to have to like just mute it and then just talk, you know, in between pitches. Or I know when to leave, man. Stuff. I'm a professional broadcaster. I don't know if you knew <laughs> this or not, but did you hear me sing earlier? I know. Professional broadcaster. I know what yeah. I mean. We, we, might, you know, we don't, might even do it in a format where we watch. For a certain amount of time and then have discussion after every inning. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It might get like that deep. Who knows? Yeah. I, can I mean, that'd be some, a lot of fun. I, dude, some some play-by-play -play breakdown. Yeah. Yeah. That'd yeah. be a lot of fun. Dig what do you it. think? What do you Not think, Angela? On this hashtag, I think that's a research. great idea. Yeah. Like, we watch a minute two thing and we're just like, who are these people? And we just look them up. And it's like, oh, my God. That's like treasure trove. Like, that's like, what like, history is supposed to be. Well, that that that's exactly it, and and again, again, it's just another avenue that we wanted to explore. So I wanted to throw it out there. All right, uh, all right, here we go. So we're we're gonna learn stuff like this. Oh, August second, nineteen thirty eight, bright yellow baseballs designed by Frederick Ra, who believes visibility of the dandelion hue spear will help players avoid being hit by a pitch. Um, are used during the first game of a double header. The one game experiment draws mixed reactions with the Dodgers complete with their sweep of the twin bill from the, uh, over the Cardinals six to two and nine to three using the traditional white ball in the second game. So this was interesting because I'm like, Oh my God, like 1938, they were kind of experimenting with like a different color of the ball. And I remember like, when I when I was growing up in the seventies, like um, softball was huge, mm -hmm. and I remember they always had the uh, the super the, bright yellow yellow ball, yep, um, ball. But but you would never see it. You don't see it much anymore. But in the seventies, it was like a big thing, right? But then it, it it got me thinking of the other colored balls. Do you remember this one? Yep, I'm waiting for it. There it is, Charles Finley. Yes, <laughs> Charles O. Finley. Right. So the um, this was the GM of the Oakland, uh, the the swing in Oakland A's. Yeah, the owner. He actually, yep. Yeah, he had the owner, and he wanted to uh, bring in these these orange baseballs. To to uh, and it, it was kind of a failed experiment, but you you can actually look. I mean, it's X PSA uh, uh, authenticated. This is a, an actual baseball that they actually tried to use, and. Um, you can actually have one of these baseballs and a steal for just oh under twelve hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> that he signed. Wait, that he signed no less. He did sign eleven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Oh, it's tempting. Tempting. <laughs> you know, I mean, you could make an offer, Jack. To eleven hundred and fifty dollars, and he couldn't even ship it for free. Nope. I know. For oh, real. Wait, he's. They're trying to hit us for shipping. Ten dollars. Yeah. Uh, hey, here's boom. the thing, you just, Jack. Here, Jack, deal breaker. Can I counter with a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing. Here's why it's not free shipping. I'll tell you why. Because you, for this amount of money, you don't want it. Uh, you have to do insurance. Mm, well, yeah, yeah, but they should. The seller should in include that in the cost. You would think. You would think that they would would handle that, but uh, right. but no. But no, yeah. Look at you want it bad enough, you pay for the shipping. 
<laughs> located in Temecula, California. I feel a road trip coming on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's, just, let's that... just roll up with a bunch of like Mac 10s and be like, give us all your Charlie Charles O'Finley signed balls. Yes, uh, Greg, it is authenticated. PSA. It definitely adds some value to huh. it. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. How many are available? Just the one? I think, uh, my, I don't know. Maybe, maybe just one. You know, you know. <laughs> Mongo, why why would there be pushback from introducing a brightly colored ball into baseball? <laughs> but that's a um, whole, there's a lot to that. Yeah, there's a, there's a, again, it, there's a lot of old baseball things. Yeah. I, I remember when I remember when the NBA actually did this. They actually changed from the leather basketball to the uh, like a synthetic, which is yeah, more because, what the world uses. Right. And you know, you know who pushed back on it? Former Phoenix Sun, uh, Steve Nash. Really? Yeah, because it was it was this. Uh, it it definitely has a different feel to it, and it was actually like making all their hands like you know you know you know wah right right sure. <laughs> With it, like, um, I don't know though. Like if you're a, I, I, if you're a high level athlete, like that's the highest level athlete. Yeah. So if you've played the game the whole time with a certain tool, like I can imagine having to change midstream, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, college players are using aluminum bats. So they go to, do they go to the professional level? That's true. You know? And you have That's to true. adjust from met from aluminum bats to wooden bats. That's a big change. You know? Yep. No, that's, Ooh, that's why that's, is that? Why is that allowed? It's just allowed. I mean, it's, it's again, old baseball. I mean, <laughs> so I mean, do you Ford, want to face? Yeah, Ford C. Frick, dude. That's who we have to blame, <laughs> of course. Well, I mean, the college thing is like, you know, if they were to use wood bats, the the oh, cost would be astronomical. Yeah. Right, there's there's that too, absolutely. But if major leaguers use aluminum bats, there would be deaths oh, in baseball. Yeah. Oh, for real? Would be hundred percent, hundred percent. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. you hitting the ball that much harder. So much harder. Like there was Gnarly. a guy from Miami okay. who got hit in the head recently in baseball. Like if he would have got hit with a bat uh, or uh, a ball off a, a aluminum bat, he would have been dead. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right. All right. Like, now and, I can. Now I can dig it. I can see. Yeah. 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 And the and the orange ball, not just is it base. You know, baseball is definitely old, 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 old money and all that stuff. But they don't want to change it. And then, Charles Finley, can I just say he wasn't the most popular person in baseball to begin with? And you see, it's like it's not just a new baseball. It's just it's you saw his name is all over the ball. Sure. So you know what I mean? So True. he's it, smart, it's smart dude. It, yeah, I was saying he's looking to cash in almost more than doing anything else. He's just looking yeah, to make a he, ton of he money. Was, he was baseballs. definitely an innovator, but um, yeah. but but he got a lot of pushback from it. Definitely not very popular. <laughs> not his, not with, popular with at all. He wanted to new. change the game. Yeah. Yeah. August 2nd, 1970. This is a very interesting one. The Royals what? signed Frank White. A very, uh, very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> the Don't Royals get that Oh, I got to get that on the soundboard. You've, you're right. <laughs> the Royals signed Frank White as an amateur free agent after he attends a Royals tryout camp. Wow. The 19-year-old infielder, one of the few successful graduates from the baseball academy the team operated in the early 1970s, will play his entire 18-year career in Kansas City, having his number retire with the franchise yeah. in 1995 along with Dick Hauser and George Brett the same yeah. year. Um, oh, yeah. So there's there's only three players that are, that came from this is awesome the Royals Academy I love it I, I love I would I would love to uh, to have graduated from the Royals Academy um, and and actually this is so weird they're both they're both last names Washington Kevin UL can you, can, UL Washington yeah out of the Royals Academy nicely done yeah, I knew that one there's another sure. Ro uh, Washington anybody Angelo do you know the other Washington actually. I will say this. He was a manager in a World Series. Ron Washington. Ron Washington. Nicely done. Yes. Job. Yeah, because he's uh, out he, there still. Ron Washington is still out there coaching. He is. He is. He's with the yeah, Braves. No? Very involved in his coaching with the Braves. Yeah. Right. Um, and Michael, question. Yeah. Who was the guy? Why am I? I'm obviously mixing Ron Washington up with somebody else. Who was the guy that the A's would use as a designated runner? I thought his name that was, was Herb Washington. Thank you. 
Thank you. That's why yes. I asked you that question. Thank you. Herb, what the designated runner? Yes. <laughs> I'm glad he's right on his guess because the only other guess I go thought was Claudel Washington. And uh, yeah, that, that's a, that's a good but one. You all too. Washington. Cheers to you all, Washington, and Frank White. Yeah. Definitely cheers. To yes. Frank White. So, um, he was initially disliked by Kansas City fans because he re- uh, he re- uh, displaced Cookie Rojas. Oh my at god, Cookie base. Rojas. Yeah, you can't, you can't do that to the cookie monster. <laughs> <laughs> Love cookie. And um, but he did he I mean he was a um a stalwart uh oh, yeah. in the infield for uh Kansas City. He set a major league record with teammate George Brett appearing in 1914 wow. games together. The record stood until 1995 when it was broken by 1995? Yes. Uh, Daryl Strawberry. <laughs> Not an infielder. I'm trying to hit the buzzer here. <laughs> don't you dare. Don't you dare. I can't handle that. I can't. Um, it was, uh, by hey, Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker. Oh, there you go. That's oh, those guys. Thinking, yes. I should have known that one. I was thinking Cal, <laughs> my, if Eddie Murray was gone by then. Oh, well. Yeah. What what were their names again? Uh, that would be Alan Sweet Hamill, Lou, and Lou Whit- and Sweet Lou, Sweet Whitaker. Lou Whitaker. That's right. Who were on? Uh, were, were they on Magnum PI? Was that right? I believe so. I believe. Yeah, so, I think yes. they were. That those two names sound like the two brothers that just get in a fight at the bar on a Friday night in a small <laughs> Texas town. It's just like, oh, there's Sweet Lou fighting that guy again. Yeah. I. I wish I could say it's Fullerton, but Alan Trammell is from my own town of Garden Grove, California. So I'll go back to North Carolina. Right. Bir- birthplace of champions. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lenny Dykstra, Kevin Lyon, uh, my cousin, Gabe. That's right. And, uh, That's right. you know, and Alan Trammell. <laughs> That's it. And uh, and Miles Straw, the current, there you go. Uh, All right. current, current major he's, leader. Yeah, but he's not a champion yet. He's not. He's not. He's not. Cheers, not. Melissa. Thank you for joining. Cheers, Mel. All right. So uh, this yeah, is sublime. Uh, yeah, I know, Greg. And sublime. Yeah. <laughs> sublime yeah. I don't practice. Scent. Okay, here we go. No, that's the wrong uh, song. Yeah. No, it isn't. Well, I no, Garden Grove. He's, he's talking Korea. to Garden Grove. There's a song called Garden Grove by Sublime. I was just thinking of the Sublime song. Right. Leave me alone. Oh, yeah, why you gotta come down so hard on it, bro? <laughs> yeah, you know, so hard, Possess- dude. You're possessed by the spirit of Steve Whistler Jr. with your anger lately, bro. <laughs> Actually, that was your cousin, one of your cousin's favorite bands. So, yeah, like, so. yeah, I know it was. And my, right. my, yeah, I'm like playing that for my brothers and sisters who are like seven and eight, and they loved it. Like, this doesn't seem appropriate. Yes, this is a very musical yes, episode. It so really we're gonna, is. We're gonna get there. All right. All right, uh, August 2nd, 1979, at the age of 32, Thurman Munson dies when his Cessna Citation jet, he is learning to fly, learning to fly, yep. clips a tree and crashes 100, uh, sorry, 1,000 feet short of the runway in Akron, Canton Regional Airport. The Yankee catcher took lessons over two years uh, to uh, get home more easily on off days to his yep. family in uh, Ohio. And, um, I wanted to, uh, I'm going to solo myself here. Um, so there's a, there's a great book that Kevin's, uh, definitely harshing me that I have not read. And you can see the, the bookmark right there. Uh, the <laughs> Captain and me, uh, Thurman Munson and Ron, uh, Bloomberg. Um, it's one of, it's a great, it's, a, it's been a great book so far. Kevin's read the whole thing and, uh, and I have to reread it again me. to catch up because yes. here's here. I'm going to really guilt, uh, Michael, the yes. author is willing to do a show with us, and you know, I think Michael needs to read the book. Wait, what? Yes. <laughs> yeah, because it, um, it so Ron uh Bloomberg, we talked about him really early in the show because he's the very first ever dead thing hitter in baseball, right? Just happened to be he had to be the first guy up, and um, so he was Thurman Munson's roommate. So this book came out last year, and it's called The Captain and Me. It's Ron Bloomberg talking about Thurman Munson. And you get an in-depth look at him because Thurman Munson was definitely not the most open person out there. I can't say Steve Carlton level, but maybe close about talking to reporters. He definitely is keeping to himself, but amazing ball player. And, you know, I didn't realize how great he really was. So I read that book. I'm like, <clears throat> how did they not just put this guy in the Hall of Fame after what happened? 
And Good yeah. Brother wants to be on the show with us. The guy, the the, uh, the author who wrote the book with Ron Bloomberg named Dan Epstein, Alex Epstein or Epstein, he's like, yeah, I can do a show with you guys. It's just, it's, but his schedule is really hard to match up with ours. Yeah. That's been the only yeah. At the yeah. time he was promoting the book. So his uh, availability wasn't like, it was, it was like, and we'd have to like do it like uh, five or six in the morning. But, uh, <laughs> But right. but now I think it's kind of cooled down. We definitely we should revisit that. Yeah, because the, paper, the paperback version's out too, and I think paperback version's um, out. But he also has a couple other books out too. Yes, yeah, about seventies baseball. So that's why I really want to get to oh. that too. Hey, and Jack, he has an ebook about Buck Owens. How about that? Yes, so about ah, really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he wrote an ebook Buck, about Buck Owens, which I do want to. Buck read. Owens was an interesting dude, man. Complicated. I don't know how he is, but you know, and and, and well, Buck, Buck Owens uh, from Hee Haw. Yep. And he actually owned uh, KNIX in Phoenix. Yeah. Ah, there yeah. you go. That's, they had that <laughs> logo. Complicated, that. complicated individual. Angelo, do you have any idea what we're talking about? No. Nope. <laughs> 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 yes, there's a country uh, music station in Phoenix called KNIX, and uh, and and Buck Owens was on Hee Haw, which was a '70s show. And uh, he had this uh, red, white, and blue guitar. It was very. It was a signature guitar that that people could recognize from anywhere. And um, and then what what is the what is the Bakersfield connection to Buck Owens? What what's well, it, I think that's the, where he's from. He's, he's and, from Bakersfield, California, okay. man. And, and there right, still right. is. I I would love to go if I get back on Bakersfield. There, the Buck Owens Crystal Palace is still there. It's like a restaurant slash like venue, I guess, where they sometimes yes. have like. You know, I mean, during the day, it might be like, you know, well, I know square dancing or something like that one day. And then maybe they have a musician play once a week. Who knows? <clears throat> Angela's just sitting in a room where like old men are talking about the glory days. Right. <laughs> Dude, there's all, there's a, a really talented country and Western star, Dwight Yoakam. That's a huge oh, yeah. Dwight. He's a huge Buck Owens mark. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely know Dwight Yoakam. Yoakam. Yeah. Know so Dwight, Dwight, Yoakam. Dwight Yoakam was heavily inspired by, oh, yeah. by Buck Owens. Dwight Yoakam in Sling Blade? Yeah, dude. There you go. Yeah. Por portraying a, a real life version of Cowboy Jack as a step. He was awesome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> he was awesome. Oh, and by the way, if you want to catch up to all of our knowledge, uh, you can actually go to our bookstore, beerbaseball.com yeah, books and find Dan Epstein books, and you can find all the stuff that I makes still us gotta get his other. Do you have any of his books yet, Mongo? No, um, the the there's a the bicentennial one, the seventies book from yes, like seventy six. I want to get yeah. um uh what was it? I can't remember something, it's something about plastic grass. I can't remember plastic the name grass of and yeah, exactly. It's it's like about yeah. yeah, so I, I in fact I, I'm I'm gonna do that this weekend. I'm gonna get them all. So here we but go. You're not all gonna right. read them. You, you, uh, See, what, what, where, <laughs> look at that, look at that. The poke of the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you're probably right. I mean, I'll probably get, I can go to his house, get it, read the book, and bring it back to him in a week. Like, I know. Go. I have a whole bookshelf of books that I have not read I yet. I mean, to uh, be fair, I have books I got in the last year. I'm like, I exactly. not touched. All right. So uh, to end this how, out. How dare you if, out him on his learning disability for reading, though? I, 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 is, if Ed's still out there, I don't know if Ed's still watching because I said, hey, you know, I want him to give his thoughts on Thurman Munson, too, because, you know, lifelong Yankee fan. And, and um, Thurman Munson was maybe like – only like the third or so captain ever on the Yankees. That's right. the thing that's not, that was not done for a long time. And he played catcher and he was mostly like, he was like the guy who helped them come back in the set. Cause they were not doing well in the seventies at all. Uh, a lot of heat. And that's how George Steinbrenner came in and swept them up and bought the team. And right. look at a lot of George Steinbrenner talk coming up here on the BBB. Yeah, there yeah, is. And that. actually let, we're going to, we're going to continue with, uh, so some Yankees, but it's actually uh, it's actually not Yankees. It, it's Yankees related, but not in a good way. Uh, oh. So let let me let me put this out there. <laughs> Name three. Oh, our way back. He can't get it. Nation went back and tag and stumble. Now they got two men in third. They got to wave one around. Get them both. We'll get them both in the plate. There's one. There's two. Look at that I play. don't believe it. Look at that play. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Tell me the when, where, and how. That was sick. 
August 2nd, 1985, with the score knotted at 3-3 at Yankee Stadium, White Sox catcher Carlton Fisk, that's Pudge to you, tags two Yankees out at the home plate uh, during the same play. The unusual 8-6-2-2 double play results when two uh, when the runners on first and second attempt to score on Ricky Henderson's double, but the outfielder, uh, Luis Salazar's perfect throw to Ozzy Guillen, who in turn throws a strike to the plate, uh, the Chicago catcher tags out both Bobby Meacham and, and a sliding Dale Barra uh, on the play. Dale Barra, the son of Yogi Barra. Um, and Billy Martin commented, I've never oh, seen no. that in grammar school, much less in a major league game. Bro, uh, Mr. Come Excitement on. in the chat, he yep. has an interesting uh, tidbit to this clip. There you go. Yes. <clears throat> that, Apparently if you, if you look at it, yeah, he actually uh, he actually has the ball in his hand, like it does, not in the glove, in his hand. This is, dude, that was one of the, that has <laughs> the greatest moments in our great sport right yeah there was there was another play where a guy hit the ball and it literally caromed off second base to the second baseman and he threw it just easily threw him out like those always used to be like the highlight clip but this one they used to show this one all the time yeah that was, I, I, dude, that was a religious experience in baseball <laughs> right there man i i felt a huge surge on that all right. I, I'm so glad you guys introduced me to baseball. That was freaking <laughs> awesome. There, we have 150 years of history. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. Well, well, um, like, you know. well I mean, I, I mean, we, we, the, the clips we can show, but we can also talk about a lot of, of baseball. But right, 150 years. But then I, I love extending this because that's 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 good enough, right? But uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, oh Dale God. and Yogi Berra. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> not a lot of people know about oh, uh, Dale Barra, but I totally forgot about this. Dale Barra was on the 1979 World Pittsburgh Series Pirates. champion, Pittsburgh yep. Pirates. Yep. I knew he was a pirate, but I forgot he was on the We Are Family team. Wow. He was. And and uh, not, not a prominent member, but but a member hey, nonetheless. Dude, but in, in that photo, Dale Bear is wearing a heavy wool sport coat, <laughs> and brother still has a set of pipes. Dude. Yeah, I know. Like, Bear oh was God. diesel, dude. Wow, yeah, he, he's got the he's got the good PEDs when he went to New yeah. York. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Yogi hooking him up, you know. Totally. Well, it's funny that you say that because uh, so so Dale actually played for the Pirates from seventy seven to eighty four. He actually came to the Yankees in 85 where his father was the manager. He didn't make it out of April. George Steinbrenner fired him like 16 games in. Shocking. Yes. And, and it hired Billy Martin and he had that quote. That's why he had that quote. So this is like the, kind of the, the, the bad years. They actually had a stacked team, but they were just not performing. And, uh, and so, and then he was there from 85 to 86 um, and then 87, but I, I found out that during this time that Dale Barrow was actually a, a cocaine addict and actually oh, no. did. He actually, no kidding. Yeah, he actually, yes. Yeah. Can you imagine late eighties? He was actually loved cocaine and, uh, what? he actually, yes, he actually had a, um, he was actually involved in a pittsburgh case where he actually testified uh like a big cocaine thing and his dad actually said like if you're doing cocaine then i'm not your i'm not your father anymore whoa Whoa. yeah and uh he stopped he said he stopped from that day on but uh, i feel like we talked about i feel like we (laughs) talked about yogi bear as the yankees manager because didn't they fire billy martin after the previous season to hire yogi Berra? as the yes. manager only to rehire and replace yes. him with Billy Martin. That's correct. Yes. Right. I think he was there like five times. Yeah. 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 Our Billy Martin was there like five times, but like, yeah. Uh, but yeah. And um, actually he didn't, that was, that was his last Yogi Berra's last managing stint. Although he was a coach for the Astros from 86 yeah. to 89. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. He never was yeah. really that successful as a manager. Unfortunately, right. obviously t- right. yeah, enough world championships as a player. He's fine. 
Although he took the Mets to the World Series in 73. Oh, there you go. That's right. Okay. Fair. There you go. Um, yeah, so that that's awesome. I I, I love anything. I love tie, I love tying it all in. And uh uh this is a this is a nice uh picture as well. I think it's <laughs> but uh, I didn't notice how big his arms are. They're actually yeah, are no, way bigger than he, yeah. he rip through Dude, it. Dude, he's got pipes like a Christmas ham. I'm telling you. <laughs> Yes, he girls has- for the girls, dude. That is all natural American beef right there. <laughs> and How dare have- you insinuate that Dale Barrow was on performance enhancing drugs, Kevin? <laughs> How dare you? They, they were legal. You know what, point. dude? You know what, dude? It, it's yeah. it's a lot it's a lot harder to lift someone up than to tear them down. But sometimes <laughs> it's worth it, buddy. You know. <laughs> All right, so let's do it. Let's do some baseball card sharks. Uh, here are the baseball card shark standings. Uh, Kevin's still in the lead by one. Wow. Um, oh uh, I really thought I was going to be number one this week. What happened? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, but but I mean, you did. I think you had, you had a win, but uh, somehow Angelo is higher, but has a higher percentage. <laughs> yeah, good old pinch hitter. Ian messed, yeah. Ian messed it up for you. Yes. Oh wait, so Ian's throwing off the the statistics. No, I, here? I don't know for sure. I'd say yeah, I think probably is. Dude. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Way to go, Ian. I, I think Angel has oh, 26. Excuse me. I have, now I have, less, I have less at bats. Exactly. Yes. Or less. Now you're tearing down someone, Cowboy Jack. Come on. That's true. That's yeah. true. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm winning tonight. All, All right. right. There you go. All now, right. What are you, there you, what, go. What are you winning? <laughs> Life, dude. <laughs> Look at. You're winning my heart. I mean, come on, Kevin. All right, so we're going to draw 11 cards. We're going to put three on the bench. (laughs) We start at the bottom. We're going to work our way up. We're going to pick a category. um, Let me uh, me get rid of this. We'll walk you through. Why are you shooting people? Jack, put the gun away. I'm in Arizona, dude. You have to have a gun to be an Arizona citizen. (laughs) It's mandatory. (laughs) It's mandatory? Yeah. I leave my house in the morning. Somebody's like, where's your AR-15, dude? Get it. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So right. we're doing pitchers this time. These are retired oh, players. So uh, what are we going to do? We're going to do um, wins, losses. Uh, we could do ERA. Strikeouts. I think losses would be fun. Losses is good. I All think right. it would be fun. If it, yeah, we'll see. Okay. Loss, <laughs> losses it is. I've already losses. called my shot yeah, and I, I picked the category. Okay. So you want to go first? Yes, and I'm right. going first. Sure, sure, Jack. Let me just Why kick up just... my let me kick up my buy me a beer socks, and you can just uh, that's fine. Sit back win. and pack a lunch, dude, because Cowboy Jack's <laughs> about to march down the field like Joe Montana. Okay, <laughs> Joe uh, Montana. Wrong, uh, wrong sport. <laughs> Wait, what? Can't you just run the bases like Willie Mays Hayes, like that documentary? <laughs> I I wasn't built for speed, dude. All right, <laughs> all, right. all right, Jack. Here you go. So the, it is losses. So your first card, and it is from the Senior Baseball League. I love the Senior League. It is Canada's oh greatest my God. athlete. It Whoa. is Fergie Jenkins, and he's playing Ball for the Winter Haven Super Sox. Dude, what what state? Where, where's Winter Haven? Where's that city? Florida. It's by Florida. I think it's, I think it's by Orlando. I think it's by like, Orlando, that's where, like, yeah. WWE, ah, like all right. I, I got super team. excited. There's a there's a town called Winter Haven in Arizona. Yeah, I know. Oh, really? At the top of Mount Lemon in Tucson. Oh wow. The little ski town. All right. So uh, one of the Baltimore Orioles greatest pitchers of all time, although you probably saw him in his underwear, Jim, Jim Palmer. Jim Palmer. Gosh, it's, that's tough. My, Michael, is. I had that battle in wins a few weeks ago. And I was like, yes. ah, or strikeouts. I think it's either wins or strikeouts. And now Jack yeah. has to do it for losses. Good luck, Jack. That is definitely tough. That's tough. Um, and then Whitey Ford. Jeez. Whitey Ford. This guy's like, yeah, whatever. Go, um, oh, this is too easy, man. Too easy. <laughs> Pedro Martinez oh and the Red Sox. Oh Yowzer. Yeah. The original I, I thought... big poppy, Pedro Martinez. Thank you for going first. <laughs> yeah, no worries. No worries. Gaylord Perry. Yeah. 
Dang it, dude. Gaylord Perry. Michael. Yes, sir. I, no, this is – This game is rigged. This game is <laughs> rigged. Dude. I can't wait to see Michael's board with, like, you know. Jim Bunning. There you go. Oh, that's Bunning. Senator Jim – That's Senator. Senator Jim Bunning. Senator Jim Bunning to you. Phil Necro. Oh, my God. Phil Necro. <laughs> this is brutal. It's a, oh my gosh, you have a lot of vets here. Excitement. I thought I was smoking a cigar when I was at <laughs> Randy Johnson. Oh my god. Oh, and what year is this? Uh, it's all time. It's all time. All time. It's, it's oh, career. so that's Randy Johnson's all time card. Yes. Um, this, I mean, it, he has it for the Mariners. Stats. He has his all his all time stats. Yeah. Got it. Understood. Understood. Okay. So on your bench, Nolan Ryan. Jesus, Jesus God in heaven. This is the most well, what do you game. care about the bench? You're not gonna look at the bench anyway. No, I'm just saying it's rigged. I know that Raleigh Fingers, He's friend of the show. God. Yes, friend of right. the show, Raleigh. Dude, that man's mustache. No one else in the world should be allowed to have a mustache as long as Raleigh Fingers is alive. <laughs> yeah, and he was at the all-star game and he, he looks just the same, actually. And then the mad Hungarian. Yeah. Al Harboski, <laughs> the mad who, Hungarian, who, who <laughs> recently on a Cardinals telecast, he goes, he was trying to like come up with Ron Burgundy, and he goes, "Who's that guy, Ron Jeremy?" Oh, <laughs> nice, dude. He literally said that. Master <laughs> of the heart punch, Al Harboski. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. let me tell you about this board, Jack. The entire board is Kevin. Hall of Famers, except for two people. So sure. Good luck. We're all yeah, don't you worry. Sit down and sit down and watch Daddy go I, to work. All right. Oh, <laughs> I'm ready. Could, all right. Here we go. Quick shift. So, 226 career losses for Fergie Jenkins. My had... lovely lady lumps, Fergie Jenkson. Yes. <laughs> 284 <laughs> wins, but 226 losses. <laughs> Two two six. So Jim Palmer, higher oh, or lower? Man. I hate Kevin minutes. laughing right now. No, I'm laughing at the chat. I'm laughing at the chat. Uh, let's go. I, Palmer's going to be a little bit higher. Uh, higher than two. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think I think Fergie has more wins, but I don't know about losses. One hundred and fifty-two. Well, crap. This game is rigged. No, I, I, ah, dude, I puffed my chest out. I, you know, I wasn't confident going into the game. I didn't believe in myself. Jack, and, uh, Jack. If I could give any hints and tips to the to my fellow athletes tonight, you know what, man? Really, just believe in yourself. Reach for that brass uh, ring because I didn't do it. <laughs> Jack, we 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 could all go one and done on this board. You're still in. Yeah, this is this is this is tough. Losses is tough. That board is just. Ugh, I don't like that board. So Angela, are you are you, yep, you want to go? go. Oh, yep, okay. okay. I was say, I'm like I'm ready to go for it. So Warren oh, Spawn is your oh, number my one. Gosh. Oh my gosh. And... Doesn't get any easier. So we already we have him on the bench, so I'm gonna put him over there. I can't believe I let's see. Should I do this? I'm I'm actually uh no no, no I'll I'll keep this in. So your your second card is Roger Clemens. Oh, Jesus. Roger Christ. Clemens. Oh, my gosh. Losses is hard because it's like it's so weird. It's we got really hard. Win. Yeah. What, dude, what dumbass picked losses? <laughs> the guy who, you know who did? The guy who lost. <laughs> so, but I'm glad you, I'm glad you picked it, actually, because it's, it's hard. 245. 245 Ooh. losses for Warren wow. Spawn. He actually has. So Spawn. Have like more than the my than Fergie, yeah. He yeah. has like something like 360 wins or something crazy like that. Yeah, he played 750 games. Jeez. So, um, so he has uh, 363 wins, but I was close. 245 losses. 245. Jeez. 245. Gosh. <clears throat> Roger Clemens higher or lower than 245? Roger Clemens has more than 245 losses. I don't know. 245. He is higher. He is higher. Higher. Finally. Okay. Uh, I don't I don't I don't know about that one. 
184. Oh my gosh. Jack, you're still in this. Wow. <laughs> We're all still in this. <laughs> all right. Time, time. All right. I got it. Don't worry. I got this. Fatal last words. Sure. <laughs> all right. So. Randy Jones, one of the greatest Padre pitchers no one knows about. He actually has his number retired with the Padres. Yeah, Randy the only, Jones. The only guy ever to win a Cy Young for the Padres. Whoop-de-doo. There you go. Dude, calm down on Randy Popaye Jones, dude. That's that right. guy is gangster as hell. There you go. Put some respect on Popaye's name. Hey, hey, hey. Whoa, he's a Cy Young Award winner. And... Catfish Hunter is your right. replacement. Partner. Catfish right. Hunter, dude. yes. But is Catfish yeah. a nickname or is that yes? His, is that is? <laughs> it, I'm sorry, that's not his Christian name. That's, that's not his Christian name. name. That's because, like, dude, I can just imagine somebody like my dad, like, well, hell yeah, you name him Catfish Hunter. Woo! <laughs> hell yeah, that's his Catholic name. That's his Catholic <laughs> name. No, he's his, his so, name is Jim Catfish Hunter. So crazy enough, yeah. Randy Jones actually doesn't have a great career record. He is 100 and 123. That tells well, you the how Padres. he's on that tells the you Padres. how the Padres were. Padres yeah, are exactly. terrible. Yeah. So 100 and 123. So 123 is your number. Catfish Hunter, higher or lower than 123. <sighs> Heck of a record, but I still think it'd be more than 123 losses just because he played longer. But I might be one and done too. Yep. Let's check it out. He has like 250 wins or something like that. 166. Yeah. Oh, wow. geez. There we go. One. Well, right. uh, Trinidad, we got knocked out early, brother. <laughs> I mean, <I'm> just, <laughs> like flip a coin. Like this next one, I'm like, Whitey Ford. Uh, yeah, 224 and 166. Whitey Ford, higher or lower than 166? Well, he was on a fantastic period for the Yankees, so I guess I'll say lower. I guess. Yeah, I'll go lower. Lower than 166. 106. He was 236. Ooh, geez. 236 and 106. All right. Very impressive, actually. Yeah, Pedro helpful. Martinez. Higher or lower than 106. Oh, boy. This is so tough. <laughs> I still think it's got to be more. I think he's got, you have to get, I think he lost more than 100 games in his career. It would, I, I would I'll still so. say higher. I'll still yeah. say higher. So. one hundred. Oh my God. Wow. Seriously. 219 and 100. Aren't there like 300 baseball games in a season? <laughs> yes. Any yes. Exactly. 100. Ugh. Losses is tough. I, it's really tough. Ugh. I right. ruined the game. And I'm, Sorry. And no, it's actually because fun. I tell you that, you get past that one, I think I, you could sweep the board. At least I could. You probably could too. So nobody's made it to the top row. So my cards are Don Sutton. Jesus criminy. That's that's tough to you. I was waiting he's to see probably got 70, He's probably got 78 losses. John Smoltz. Oh my gosh. That one alone. I would Terry Wood. All right, now there you go. You get past that. You got you got that one. And Tom Seaver. Oh geez. Come oh, on. Terrific. This game is rigged. <laughs> Come on. I don't know anything about losses. This first, I mean, you gotta get past this first one. After this first one, you might make it. So 256 losses for Don Sutton. Oh, wow. 256, uh, 324 wins. Yep. But 256. Hey, and as Ed Brown says, Don Lutzen, not sorry, like Don Larson. Don Sutton never lost a perm. No, he didn't. Fair. Yeah. Okay. Very, very Mike Brady ish yes. for those uh, fans of uh, the comedy Brady Bunch. Uh, <laughs> uh, John Smoltz. So the number is 256. Jeez, I'm going to say it. he's he he has less. Yeah, it's got to be. That's a lot. Of yeah, losses. because I remember him being a reliever later in his career. Yeah. So um, that's the uh, only reason I'm saying that. Uh, 
Are, okay, so, so is it games that they pitched are considered losing or? No, you, you actually, there's a stat, like everybody either wins a game or loses a game. So like <clears throat> they literally take the loss. Yeah. If okay. you're the pitcher, right. if you're the pitcher where your team falls behind and they lose the game, you get the loss. Yeah. Okay. It's what, it's what they call pitcher of record. Yes. Got it. So, so like, for instance, you have to, you actually have to like pitch five innings to get a win as a starter. As a starter, so right. like, but but then you can come in in the six, and then like the team scores in your inning, and you could get the win for the game, huh. or you could lose the game if you give up the runs and you were in the lead. So like, but it's the pitcher of record. So uh, yeah. One, so the other night, I found myself bored, and I was reading an article on the uh, the harmonic frequencies of a nuclear reactor, and there's a lot of math in there. But apparently, yeah. baseball's like, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> there were the less equations hearing about a nuclear bomb I, than I, I wish sentence. i wish we could talk about the whip ratio oh my I god wish. yeah yeah because yeah. that's in our fantasy league so you should know what that is jack you should definitely ask that you guys twice a week like <laughs> and, who's, matter. and who's in first place cowboy jack yeah exactly yeah beginner's luck all right 155 is the number to beat Kerry Wood. Oh, this is very interesting. So he what? had a he had a a semi long career, a good career. One fifty five. Does he have more than that? Mm. Wow. <laughs> so I'm gonna say less only because he didn't have the long career that I think you're okay with that. John that's Smoltz what had. That's what I would say. Seventy five. Right. 75. That's the As only you, reason. Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Then you're going to go and sweep the board and win this thing. Get 86 Jeez. wins, which I wouldn't have gotten either. I wouldn't have got yeah. 86 wins. So Tom Seaver, I would definitely say more because he had a long career. Yeah. Uh, with uh, two, uh, with the, the Mets and the Reds. And the White so, Sox. And the Red And the White Sox. Sox. He ended with the White Sox. Yeah. You're right. So. And, the, and don't forget the Red Sox. Oh, that's you right. He actually... He would have won a, a 86. He would have won a yeah, ring. If he, he the Red won. Sox team. Yes, sir. So, uh, so one, uh, sorry, 75. Uh, I'll definitely yeah. say more, more. Right. And 205, 205. Okay. 205, make it up there. <laughs> Gaylord <laughs> Perry. Um, I would say that he, he has more. He has more. Yeah. He has, he has more. Saying, you got this. You got it, yeah. Mongo. You sweep the board. Just, just <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You got it's this. Pressure, you got it, Amir. He has more. It. He has more wins and more losses. I'll say more in both of them. Uh, losses two hundred sixty five. Yep. Two sixty five for Gaylord Perry, Jim Bunning. Uh, he'll, I'll say less, even though I'm not. Yeah, I, I mean, he didn't have the lengthy career that that Gaylord had, so I'll say less. That's said you got this. It's done. It's a done deal. 184. No, 184. So confused. You got this. <laughs> All right. Come Phil on, Necro. Phil Come Necro. Um, I, I, he'll have more. He'll have more. He had a long career. 184. Like 275 probably. Oh, my God. 274. <laughs> Holy cow. Wow. The savant. Seriously, Dustin Hoffman and Rain Man. But look, I can't win this game though. Although he's yeah. gonna win it because and Randy Johnson has, so has 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 less, although a storied career, definitely less. But but For the win. Oh my god. Look look at look at the text there. You can barely read it. Oh my god. Oh it's my god. Less. Gotta... Don't worry though. There's no way he has more than that. 166. There you go. Piece of wow. cake. There you go. Piece of cake from Mongo runs aboard. Right. What a oh, shock. Wow. What a oh, shock. It's really what a weird. Shock. It's what a shock. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just let the guy have his win, dude? No. I know. I mean, nah. <laughs> it's, hey, it's much, I, it's I don't much... call you the professor for no reason, champ. All that's right? right. Well done. Well done. <laughs>
It's much it, like in fantasy baseball where I got up to second place and uh, Greg Hall, who is obviously in the chat, he, he wouldn't even let me have that. He goes, we're, t- we're tied percentage wise for, Michael, hey, Michael. Yeah. We're tied for first now. Ah, Wait, what? yes, we are. Wait, he said what? Get, coincidentally, yep. he said, I'm a game behind right now. And then, oh, he just happened to win. Oh, wait, in Card Sharks. Yes, Card Sharks. Oh, yeah. I thought you were right talking there. about Fantasy League. We have, we have, we have, to uh, race some snakes. Is this, we have an identical is this real record. Life or, is this real life, though, Jack, or is it just fantasy? Yeah. <laughs> is this the world, real world? It's a musical episode. It's a musical episode. Exactly. All right, Mama, so let's do some trivia to end it out. Just killed a man. Go. <laughs> Your mom probably did just kill a man. To be she fair. probably <laughs> did, dude. You know. Yeah. You know that lady. <laughs> Prison All life right, is so hard. Let's... Prison life is hard, dude. I'm not gonna judge my mom for ice and a dude. <laughs> oh my oh, goodness. We're uh... busting out. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> busting out. But your your mom's busting out of L seven, no? <laughs> it's gonna be a jailbreak tonight. <laughs> uh, All right, here we go. So let's do some oh, baseball what? trivia. Let's test your knowledge of baseball. We want to hear it from the chat. Let's know what your choices are here. Question number one: This Hall of Famer has struck out more times than any Hall of Famer. Who is he? Here is the choices. Is it Mike Schmidt? Oof. Is it Willie Stargell? Is it Reggie Jackson, Jim Tomey, Tomey Tony Perez, or Derek Jeter? Well, I'll tell you who I know it's not. I know it's not Eddie Goodell. Because <laughs> he had a thousand uh, on base percentage. He did. He did. No strikeouts. No strikeouts for my man, Eddie Condell. Bubble Pug going with Jim Tomey. Dude, I'm locking it in with our homie, our VP, our VP Bubble Pug. I, 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 I do like Ed's answer. Oh. Mike Moss going with the, the friend of the show, dropping bombs, Reggie Jackson. Greg Hall going with Reggie Sanders. Wow. I mean, uh, Reggie Reggie Sanders. <laughs> Reggie, Reggie Sanders struck out quite a bit, too. Yes, he really did. That's very true. Oh, Punk's going to go with Willie Stargell. Pops. Pops. Yes. Ed like going with Mr. October. Now, not Mr. November. Derek not Mr. Jeter. November, number six. Yes. But Mr. October. Number three. Not not number two like Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. Angela, who are you going with? So I'll give a long-winded answer here. <laughs> okay. okay. The long-winded let me get my, answer Let me get my pen is, and paper, bro. <laughs> the long-winded answer is the Angels today traded away Brandon Marsh, and I was at first disappointed because a ton of potential there. Until I read that he has the highest strikeout percentage in the Major League Baseball by a large margin. Striking really? Number Joey Gallo? Come on. Striking out 36.2% of the time wow. this season. So, in celebration <laughs> of that, a former angel, friend of the show, Reggie Jackson, is a Hall of Famer that leads in strikeouts. Yes. Nice. Okay. Okay. That's that's good. I, I didn't know that. Wow. I, I, wow. Yeah, I think Brandon, the next I mean, so the next closest strike out nowadays. Yeah, the next closest person I think was like twenty three point something percent. So like by thirteen percent. Can't believe not even Joey Gallo. It seemed like he's he was terrible this year. Yeah, I guess it also depends on the number of at bats too, right? So well, yeah. Ed says Gallo had a sixty percent bat K rate in his Yankees tenure. Right in his Yankees tenure, but this season. Well, that'd be this season. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. Right. Yeah, yeah, he's only been a, a Yankee fan. Let's year. see. Now he's gonna be a Dodger. I'm sure he's gonna blossom. Him and Cody Dodger <laughs> are gonna blossom together with some flowers and some plants. Let me tell you right now. Yeah. I really in, in love fairness, it when you just need a hole in the lineup. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Oh my God. 60%. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, yeah that sounds yeah. right. Well, th- these are Hall of Fame numbers. Look at look at the people here. All, There's a lot of striking numbers for here. <laughs> all, all of fame, fame. numbers. <laughs> wait till you hear how many times they, these all of these guys have struck oh, out. Oh, good. I it's, can't wait to hear the numbers. It's insane. It's insane. Jack, what do you got? Uh, I was gonna go with Bubble Pug until she changed her answer to Mr. October. So I am gonna pick Mr. Uh, Mr. Gift Basket, Derek Jeter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. So, so you know i found one of my old cards i use because you play the match game music so i just put his name about it so i have a new nickname for mr october i have reggie bosom jackson all right <laughs> that's, that's reggie super, jackson that was that was cool man yeah whatever <laughs> i got the right answer it's all that matters <laughs> yeah whatever who do we got, big professor? Who do we got? Mr. Gift Basket. All right. Wait for the answer, there Michael. There we go. Ready? Yeah, of course. Mr. Guest, big gift basket. So good. <laughs> it is Reggie I'm... Jackson. No, oh, what's the <laughs> look, at, look at that yeah. smiling whiff. Now so we... good. He could not be happier. Yeah, striking out. Now, to Striking be fair, up. I think it's fair to say that Derek Jeter probably passed out more than 2,597 gift baskets. Sure. <laughs> to be fair. So, so Reggie Jackson was first, 2,597. Oh, oh. Jim See, Tomey, I was confused because Derek Jeter never struck out from what I hear. So. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> then, then why did you miss that question? <laughs> it, was, I, it was all a big setup to make that joke. Right. Yeah, exactly. Ah, uh, you know what? Yeah. Comedy. You know what? It's not comedy if you have to explain it. So I'm sorry. No, so I'm Reggie, sorry. I, I'm just salty and kind of drunk, so that's all right. So Re- Reggie's number one. Jim Tomey number two. Twenty five forty eight. Wow, Willie really Stargell nineteen thirty six. Michael good Jack year. Schmidt eighteen eighty three. Another Tony good year. Tony Perez eighteen sixty seven. Another good year. Yes. Derek Jeter struck out 1840, but um, we'll, we'll say that he, he did pretty well for himself. Yeah, he but right. here, here's a number that uh, who's in seventh place. This is actually a very interesting. Uh, uh, like who's, what? In seventh, who's in seventh place? Hall of Famers strikeouts all time. Gosh, you're thinking it'd be like a. Let me think about this. You'd be, you're going to be surprised actually who it is. About Pete Rose. Oh, you said Hall of Famers. I can't say Pete Rose. I think yeah, exactly. A right, right. Who struck out a bunch? You don't. I don't. I don't know him for striking out. Oh, okay. And I'm. I'm, I'm going to give you. Of, I was trying to think of tenure. You know, I was. You know, Ricky Anderson had a lot of tenure. So let's go with Ricky Anderson. Okay, Angela, who's on your wall? King oh. Griffey Jr. and yeah, Griffey Jr. Yeah. 1779. So I wasn't alive then, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey Mantle is a, is a great guess. Um, all great. right. So question number two. Number two. Who is the last Braves third baseman to lead the National League in home runs? Here are your choices. Eddie Matthews, Bob Horner, Chipper Jones, Terry Pendleton, Bob Elliott, from the famous uh, 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 Bob and Ray. No, he's actually a baseball player. Or Vinny Castilla. I'd say, isn't there a Bob Elliott in uh, NASCAR? But I think Richard Elliott. Yeah. There's also a, uh, Elliott Perry. He was known as Sox. He was played for in the NBA, the Phoenix Sox. Ah, yes. There you go. Right now. Really like, oh, Ian going with Vinny Castilla. Put my card in and just give my little flicker that you know it's in. Bubble Pug going with Larry Chipper Jones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ed being the, the NBA fan, that is, yes, that is a yes, super deep I appreciate that. 
Well, I like Greg Hall. They went, oh, bro, we, oh, I want to say Cowboy Jack, where'd Bob Horner go to college? Uh, University of Manitoba. <laughs> <laughs> The oh, yeah! Why not nice. somebody pick the guy with it's a, it's a it's a split jury amongst the uh, yeah. There's a lot. Know? There's a... <clears throat> there you go from the hot corner. I mean, yes. we know you know if you guys remember, there is a man before five hundred home runs on this list. One, just one. Yep, and two Hall of Famers on this list, right? Yeah, two. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely two. Also, Wapner's on at three. You You know what? I'm going to go with uh, number two, Mr. Wrestling number two, (laughs) Bob Horner. (laughs) Very good. Very good. 97X, the future of rock and roll. That's right. 97X, the future. That's a Rayman reference as well, by the way. (laughs) I know about Rayman for sure. I was torn between two. I was what? torn between two people on this list. Okay. Um, but I'll go with uh, our guy, Ian, at If Sports Cards and go Vinny Castilla. Ooh, Rats. okay. I already wrote that to you. I don't know why. I, I don't know why. Vinny Castilla came up. So I, my old card said Fanny. So his nickname now is Vinny Fanny Castilla. All right. Yeah, that's a new nickname. I'm gonna throw yeah. Card. So it's all over the place. Yeah. And the, the other way. option. The other option, Ooh. the other option was Terry Pendleton, but I'm going to Vinny Castillo. I, and that's the one I wasn't sure on either. But I remember Vinny had a year where he blew up, and I was thinking that was when he was with the Braves, but I might be wrong. Well, uh, the answer is the greatest Braves third baseman of all time, oh, Eddie true. Matthews. It is Eddie Matthews. Ah, oh, oh. yeah, no, this no, guy no. doesn't get enough. Oh, wow. Well, no. But no we love. talked. To- but did, oh no, I'm, I was thinking Harmon Kilver, the guy who had like not that great bag average, but he had over 500 home runs. I think. Yeah, like, yeah. Five twelve. Do you have the number there? Was it yeah, 5, so 12, he, he, 5, yeah, 512 uh, total 12, home yeah. runs in 17 years. That that year of 1959, he was he was only 27. He had 46 home runs, 114 RBIs, and a 306 average. Like this guy, like sure again, it's like one. no one talks about him. Like he's like one of the greatest uh, third basemen of all time. And uh, again, before our time, but that. but like, but the Vinny Castilla you probably were thinking about was when he was with the Rockies. Rocky, it was the Rockies. Mm. Yeah, when you when I'm not talking about loud going, oh shoot, what's the Rockies? Oh well, whatever. Yeah, and even Bob Elliott was actually uh, uh, one of the greatest uh, third basemen for the for the Braves that no one knows about either. Because Terry Pelton had like an amazing couple of years, but I was like, he didn't hit the one run title and. Horner was really good, but he had Dale Murphy to hit more home runs than him. Yeah, Bob, Bob Horner and uh, Terry Pendleton also play for the Cardinals. So it's like uh, Terry Pendleton started with the with uh, the Cardinals. Uh, Bob Horner actually eventually made it to the Cardinals from from Atlanta. So, uh, but Chipper Jones, uh, great hitter, but didn't lead the, the didn't lead this category. See, Ball Pugs knows what's up. This is rigged. <laughs> it's all rigged when you don't it's get all, it right, right? You know what? It's all work, brother. The thing I learned it's from being in wrestling and knowing Matt Sinister for 30 years is everything's a work. And exactly. Exactly. Life is a so work. So that's our show for this week. Uh, if you want to support us at the Beer Baseball blog, it's the beginning of the month. So uh definitely get your Patreon in. We 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 take tips and it's through Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. Thank you to Jody and Mike Moss for being Patreon subscribers. Uh, recently, we really super appreciate it. Um, and yeah, uh, dude, yeah. and only only nerds don't support us on Patreon. So don't be a oh, friggin' whoa, whoa! Don't be a nerd, dude. All whoa. right. Whoa. <laughs> no, how about this? How about this? We're gonna we're gonna reframe this. If you want to be a super nerd and support our nerdiness, sure, be, be a well, Patreon uh, member. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> but we're we, not going to Patreon shame. Aren't we like basically like really super cool because we're so entrenched in our nerddom? <laughs> so like we're the cool guys. Uh, I, I think we're in the minority here. Uh, <laughs> Once wow, in my life, I wanted to be cool. Jeez, try to build you up. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, you Jack? Jack, you can build me up, Buttercup. All right. Oh, all right, but never you let me down. There you go. Oh, Thank you, David. Down, buddy, I'm sure. We we appreciate you watching every week. 
If you'd like to support us, you can buy our uh, stickers, buttons, and beer coasters on our Etsy page, beerbaseball.store. Here's where you can find us uh, doing all of our fun stuff on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and Jackie Martling's favorite, TikTok, which we haven't uh, done anything in a while, but we're going to put some stuff on there. Um, again, we have a lot of stuff coming up that we've been talking about and doing some stuff. Ke Kevin's already leaving early. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's heading for the parking lot, dude. <laughs> you know, I think I would like if our, our TikTok channel was just Kevin drinking at Radiant Beer. Like, there you go. I think that would be fantastic comment. Just like, hey, today I'm drinking this beer. Today I'm drinking this other beer. I mean, we could get probably 32 posts a day, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Innuendo. 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 Right so, all right. So, uh, Angelo, so uh, your Saturday show has been yep, uh, so a great success. So thank you so much for that. So this Saturday, another uh, new edition of Beer and Break with Angelo. I'll be opening up 2022 Panini Select Baseball this week, I believe. And uh, so tune into that, uh, premiering Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, I'll be opening up some, I don't want to say vintage, because it's not vintage like packs and pints uh, with Kevin. But I'll be opening uh, some non-newer product uh, over the next couple of weeks here on Beer and Break. So stay tuned for that. Um, and thank you guys for all your support. Awesome. Awesome. Kevin, what do you got? You hear that explosion? They're coming for me. <laughs> sure. Jeez, I don't <laughs> oh think you guys God, heard that. That was, that was real? <laughs> Did you guys hear that? That really was like... That was an explosion? <laughs> yeah, that was like a firework going off or something. <laughs> a firework. Fire, yeah. A firework. Well, I mean, the place of ours is a half mile from... NIPD is a half mile from me. They know where I am. Don't worry. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Cowboy Jack, this Sunday, 2 p.m. Pacific, we're going to talk about a, a incident, well, well, a famous incident in baseball in Cleveland, Ohio. They decided to do a thing called 10 Cent Beer Night. So we're going to have a good time talking about that. That's going to be a 2 p.m. Pacific live on the Instagram. And uh, tomorrow, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I don't know when yet. And I want to show you something. This is beautiful. Michael got me some more packs. The box that came in, people who know will know and appreciate this. Look at what it came in. Oh, wow. A, a Superman <laughs> 3 box. Like box. Wow. I, was, I was actually disappointed I didn't get, get a Any Gus Superman Gorman. Any 3 cards? Yeah, I wanted a Gus Gorman rookie card. You know, that, you know. <laughs> or Robert Vaughn card. Are you kidding me? You, get, you know, Christopher Reeve, man, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. I'm so I pulled this out and I just grabbed two packs. Oh gosh, look how shiny these are. We're going to goose two packs of leaf baseball. I don't know what year these are, but it's leaf. This is the Canadian version of Donruss. Wow. And uh literally it does not say the year. On here anywhere so i'll have the hashtag yeah. do the research it says the leaf set in this one it says the unusual puppet puzzle but doesn't say what year in that fantastic advertising doesn't say what year Great advertising. That's super cool why, hey why it's timeless it? dude i think it's smart advertising oh look at this we, we have our our fact checker Jeez. right here wow <laughs> Jeez, wow dude great. we got a new rain man in the group bro yeah no kidding <laughs> so yeah mutual and yogi bear puzzles he knows it all right i'll have to go to you for my leaf baseball questions thank you very much yeah nice and you might hear me speak drunkenly in french that's always fun too it'll either be <laughs> at like seven or ten you gotta like that it's better than what my plans are tomorrow nice nice, nice. exactly jack what do you got all right i ruined your plug jack no, it's fine, man. Support us on Patreon. Support Kevin on uh, Pints and Packs. Support Angelo on Beer and Break. Follow us on uh, Hazy History on the Instagram. Tune in every Tuesday night for the Crown Jewel. The wait, hold on. The Diamond Exchange, the Crown Jewel of craft beer and baseball. Easy for me to say. Everybody, we're all going through it. If you're having a hard time, reach out. We love you. We wouldn't be as together as we are if we didn't have this show. So thank you. We love you. All right. 
Thanks, guys. We'll see you next Tuesday for another uh, beer baseball broadcast. More craft beer and curveballs. Good night, everyone. Take care.